that would be the muzzle flash out of the wand and then a spell hit that would hit. Within After Effects, I used Element 3D. Harry Potter has a very distinct score. For the score, I used Logic. It was very surreal to see it on this massive like AMC cinema screen. Hey guys, welcome back to Cam's Corner. This is part two of how we made our own John Wick movie for less than $1,000. In this video, I'll be covering the whole post-production process. So if you haven't seen the first part, you can click the link right here to go check it out or link in the description. Section six, the visual effects, which is probably what a lot of you guys are curious about. There's a lot of different visual effects in this video. I'll be covering three of the main ones that I did for the video. So the first one is the spell hits. Initially, when I first came up with the idea, I thought I maybe would have to go into a particle plugin, like particular or one of the ones that are built into After Effects to make custom magic kits. But fortunately, during the pre-production process, um, this amazing stock footage website that I use all the time called Action VFX, they released a free spell hit pack. Every angle, or different sizes, everything you can need. And I was like, this is literally perfect for what I need. Since we were going for more of a shootout scene, in a shootout, you have the muzzle flash that comes out of the gun, and then via a blood hit or an impact hit on either the wall or on the person who gets shot. For, for our short, I decided to go with spell hits. That would be the muzzle flash out of the wand, and then a spell hit that would hit out of the person or, or the wall or the ground or wherever it hits. And also, yeah, I decided that John Witch in my story wasn't attempting to murder all the bounty hunters. The bounty hunters were all trying to kill John Witch. On the wanted poster in the beginning, uh, specifically it says dead or alive. So they don't really care if he's alive. They don't have to take him in alive. So they would be using Avada Kedavra killing spell from Harry Potter, while John Witch would be using the Stupefy spell, which is more of a blue color in, in the movies. And then I feel like that made a fun color contrast, because I feel like if it was all the same color, it would get a little boring. I think the blue-green contrast, I think, worked pretty well visually. So for the visual effects, very much just compositing these spell elements, which was not super difficult, just a little bit time consuming, because there's so many of them. Then you sort of add a little bit of glow, and then maybe if the person shooting it is in the foreground, then maybe there's a little bit of rotoscoping to put the spell in between the foreground person and the background. And the second one is another popular Harry Potter magical ability, Apparition. I didn't come up with how to do this myself. Um, I've seen the movies and obviously they have much more complicated like 3D simulations and all that, but I needed to do a version of Apparition that was uh, accomplishable in After Effects alone. Fortunately, YouTube came to the rescue like it always does. I searched Harry Potter Apparition Effect, After Effects, and there were like a bunch of different tutorials that were fantastic. I'll link some of them in the description below if you want to check them out. Studied the tutorials, figured out how to do it myself in After Effects, and then basically did it over and over again. The third big one was one of the early attempts of mine of doing a 3D object. This is the uh, frying pan that John Wingardium Leviosa's and flicks at one of the bounty hunters, who is actually my friend Antonius. For the frying pan, I decided against using a real frying pan because I didn't think it would be safe and it would take too much time to set up, put it on wire and like flick it at somebody's head. So the full frying pan was CG. It was one of my first times attempting to create a full CG 3D object. I was able to get a 3D frying pan from the website turbosquid.com for free. Uh, one thing that I had to do was get what's called an HDRI, high dynamic range image. Sort of get the reference lighting of everything around it that you can map back onto the 3D object so it looks like it blends with the scene and matches the lighting of everything around it. I didn't have like a, a 360 camera at the time, but I just used my phone um, to record what's called a photosphere. I have a Google Pixel. So basically I can stand in one place and just rotate around and get a 360 degree sphere of the whole environment for the two shots that the frying pan appears in. Within After Effects, I used Element 3D as my 3D plugin software. So instead of using a, a more complicated software like Blender or Cinema 4D, which I wasn't familiar with, I used Element 3D within After Effects itself. So I did all the animation and all the compositing within After Effects itself. The animation of the pan, I keyframe animated it, but I did my best to sort of match it to realistic physics and then ultimately it's the sound design of the pan hitting the head and the pan hitting the ground that really marries everything together. So those are the couple of big VFX things that I had to tackle with the short. Next, let's talk about sound design. Since there wasn't a lot of dialogue in the short, we didn't have to worry too much about on-set audio recording. What I had was a Rode video mic on my GH5 and it got good enough scratch audio that was usable. I knew that we could do most of the sound design in post. One of the main things that we had to do for the sound design was 
How do we do spell hits? Because are we doing the same sound effects that come from the Harry Potter movies? Or since we're doing more of a shootout, is there a different sound to how the spells sound? Eventually, I found sort of a middle ground where I searched Harry Potter spell sound effects on Google. French website that, that had a bunch of spell hit sounds that they actually extracted from the movies themselves. So they were 100% accurate to the Harry Potter movies. But I knew that wasn't enough. I needed maybe a harder impact sound. I wanted to make them a little bit punchier, if that makes sense. I went through my own sound library and then I found a bunch of these uh, whip sound effects, like a bull whip. Like if you whip something and it, there's like a sound. And then I added all of that to the existing Harry Potter spell effects. That really was probably what the, the spell hits sounded like. Other sound design stuff was just blending the effects as well as I could, layering up sound effects to make them sound fuller. I'm not like a professional sound designer. So I'm not gonna like pretend that I really know exactly what I'm talking about, but I thought maybe I would share the couple of things that I had some creative ideas on in terms of sound design. Now, let's go into music. For music, my friend Siraj, one of my best friends in the world. I've known him since freshman year of college. Just super talented filmmaker overall, but also a great musician, incredible pianist, and he makes his own electronic music. He did the score. In the present right now, I haven't filmed the section yet, but I will be filming a short interview with Siraj where you can break down how he approached the music and you will see it right now. Hi everyone, I'm Siraj. I'm the composer on John Witch. I've known Cam since film school. We literally met our first day of film school, so it was awesome. And then we came out to LA and room together. I've scored a few Cam's creations videos. Uh, I think some of the notable ones are Tripod Warfare. Uh, face Swap. Uh, and then obviously I've appeared in many Cam's creations content as either a villain or Cam's roommate. Suzuki! How did you approach creating a Harry Potter and John Wick mashup score? It's always interesting when you're working with existing source material. Harry Potter has a very distinct score, you know, a really awesome score by John Williams that, you know, everyone is familiar with the themes. And then John Wick, you know, obviously also another, you know, great inspiration. Um, you know, the music a little bit more tied to the atmosphere, like something action-y, something a little more kind of electronic. I think, you know, the first question in my head was, how are we going to combine both sort of the magic and themes of Harry Potter with sort of the atmosphere and ambiance of John Wick? So yeah, I think that was like sort of the, the starting point for, for scoring. What software or tools did you use to create the score for John Wick? Yeah, so uh, for the score, I used Logic, actually. Um, so for a long time, I was a GarageBand user. So Logic was sort of like a natural, GarageBand's the free version. So, you know, I recommend to anyone who's starting in music, you know, definitely use your free tools first to sort of learn uh, and then, you know, upgrade to slightly better stuff once you sort of figure out the basics. But yeah, Logic is great. You know, it has plenty of awesome plugins. Um, you can like adjust automation, you know, so as music is playing, you can adjust, you know, the volume and different effects, add a lot of different, you know, post-processing effects to, to add some more, you know, ambience to it. What was your creative process for creating the score for John Witch? You know, in terms of like the actual score itself, so there's a couple, I would say there's two parts of the process to creating any score. So the first one is just sort of making sure that your, your themes and tones are right. So this was a case where I think because it was more of an action short that had more magic in it, I leaned more into the action side. So, so keeping things a little more fast paced, beat, more synthesizer based, sort of kind of in the John Wick world. So, you know, whenever you're seeing the fight happening, you know, there's something that goes along with it and sort of keeps it energized. So yeah, the first part is sort of identifying that, that tone and overall soundscape, which in this case was more electronic. Then the second part is actually watching the final cut. And then actually, you know, a great part about these tools like Logic is that you can actually drag in the video and play it, you know, as you're composing uh, or, you know, making adjustments. So that's used for identifying what I think in the industry is called hit points. So hit points are sort of like these key moments that occur, you know, for example, like someone gets punched, right? And you want to accent that, you know, that's a hit point or a character, you know, finally you know, jumps out of the building, they escape, right? So that's like another hit point. So try to identify each of those individual moments so that the music actually is guiding you along the journey as well. So, you know, on one hand, it is an atmospheric thing. It is sort of tied to the theme and you want to keep it in that sense. But the other hand, it has to actually acknowledge different moments, um, you know, in the content itself. So yeah, it, you know, at once I sort of established the, the score uh, in terms of like the types of instruments, um, then it was more of a matter of once 
Cameron sent me the footage, you know, I added it to my timeline and then I was sort of going through and identifying, you know, what are the moments that I want to really accent. The good part about it, and this was actually an interesting challenge too, because it's like, at what point do I want to be more Harry Potter? At what point do I want to be more John Wick? Uh, that was, you know, a huge debate in my head as I was going through this. Um, and I think I sort of figured out like a certain logic to how I, how I wanted that to actually play out. So. In the moments when there's a lot of action going on, when people are getting punched, people are getting, you know, shot with the wands and everything, um, those parts would be more, you know, electronic, drums, beats, you know, because we're trying to really just push you through the action. But then there are moments in between the fights when, you know, John Wick is, or John Witch is, you know, taking cover, he's like maybe preparing, you know, the next batch of enemies is about to come. Um, sort of in those quiet moments, you know, between the actual fights. Those parts I brought up more Harry Potter. Um, you know, when it's a little more quiet, you know, you start to hear more of like the Harry Potter themes. Um, and then, you know, once the bad guys come back and start fighting, then you know, we go back into John Wick world. So it's sort of like a, this interesting balance between the two um, and trying to, you know, use whichever theme is most appropriate for whichever moment, you know, that sort of helps um, carry along the video. Where can viewers find more of your music? Yeah, you can follow me on soundcloud.com slash circle, S-U-R-C-L-E. Um, but yeah, you know, always great working with Cameron. You know, be sure, I'm sure there's going to be a lot more exciting content, shorts, very excited for, you know, some of these scripts that I've been reading. Uh, so be prepared, be prepared for some awesome stuff. Filmed the entire thing. We did the VFX, sound design, score, all the post stuff. The short is done and it went on YouTube. The main goal of the short at the time was let me try to make a viral internet video timed up with the release of John Wick 3. On YouTube, it got about 360,000 views to this date, so it performed pretty well. Thank you if you're one of the people who watched it, thank you. Previously, I've had some success sharing my work on Reddit. This time I decided to submit John Wick to the r slash filmmakers Reddit. The response was extremely positive there, and it felt very validating that a lot of other filmmakers who, uh, who are on the internet saw my work and liked it. Um, I think it was at the top of the filmmakers subreddit for two days straight. I, I felt like, oh cool, a lot of my peers and other filmmakers found it entertaining or found it at least worthy of them checking out. So very grateful to the filmmakers in that subreddit. And then, so actually three years later in 2022, this year, I've been touring the festival circuit with a horror short film I made, which I will talk to you guys about at some point soon. I decided to submit John Witt to a few film festivals as well, just to see how it would perform and see if any of the festivals thought it was any good or if they wanted to showcase it to their audiences. And fortunately, it actually did pretty well. It won Best Fan Film at the LA Sci-Fi and Horror Film Festival. That was very cool. But the, the one thing I was really, really happy with, a couple weeks ago, I got to fly to New York City because it was selected at the Urban Action Showcase International Action Film Festival. And it was gonna be screening for a live audience at the AMC in Times Square, at the AMC Empire 25 in New York City. So I flew out to the festival um, and got to watch our movie on a big screen. It was designed to go on YouTube. It was very surreal to see it on this massive like AMC cinema screen. Surprisingly, not only was it selected at the film festival and got to screen there, on the first night um, where they had the award ceremony, it actually won Best Fan Film at the Urban Action Showcase Short Film Showdown. So I got to like take home this fun little trophy. So um, yeah, and it's been very fun just for the last two videos to go down memory lane and look back on how we pulled this little short off for like no resources and have it not only have some success online, but also to be able to screen on a big screen at a film festival and wouldn't have been possible without the hard work of everybody involved in this project. So that's it for the behind the scenes breakdowns of how we pulled off this uh, John Wick action short for no money. So my hope is that the last two videos, if you watch them both, um, hopefully it not only was insightful and informative and you could take some tangible filmmaking knowledge away from them, but also it shows you what is possible by just a bunch of friends with limited resources and hopefully inspires you to go make your own projects. Making movies seems super daunting and it can be, especially on like the big budget things, there's like a lot of pressure and it seems very unapproachable, but you can make your own movies with your friends. and. I made John Witch after years of making other videos. Like if you go to my YouTube channel, you'll see all these little shorts I've made for much even lesser budgets and fewer resources than even John Witch had. Make friends with other talented artists, help them on their projects, they'll help you on your projects, and you can make cool and fun stuff for not a lot of money.
So, hope you enjoy the last two videos breaking down how I made John Witch. Um, next week, I'll have a new video for you um, breaking down another creative process. So, so subscribe, stay tuned, um, and I'll see you soon with a new video.